Shabbat Shalom, guys. Shabbat Shalom. We made it to another Shabbat. Um, we're in Mark chapter 5. We just finished Exodus chapter 23. Check out that video. You can subscribe to Storm's Enlightenment channel. Uh, hopefully it goes up there, but it's definitely up here on, um, on Instagram. All right. So last time in, in Mark, we, we read about when Jesus was on the ship sleeping, right? He was getting some rest and the waves were coming in on the ship and, and, um, the people was in fear and they said, do you care that we perish? Do you care that we perish? Right? That's what the people were saying. Do you care that we perish? And, you know, he said, why are you so fearful? Like basically giving them assurance that I'm, I'm always with you. You know what I mean? I'm never, I'm never really sleeping. God is always with you. Right? So Jesus, Jesus was a man, but he was showing them that they could, they could trust and depend on God, no matter what circumstances look like. All right. So Mark chapter five, let's see what's going on in Mark chapter five. That's one of the highlights. Y'all can check that out on, um, the enlightenment channel on YouTube. That's saved to YouTube and it's, and it's up here also. All right, let's do it. Yo, hold it down. It says, and they came pause. Let me pray for anybody who will come up here new, anybody uh, where this video will go. Um, Father God, thank you um, that we have another opportunity to praise your name, to be in your word, Lord God. I ask that you bless every viewer, everyone who will comment, everyone who will share, Lord God. All our social media friends and family, Lord God, bless their lives with this word. Give, the, give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding upon your scriptures, Lord. This is the bread of life. We thank you. Give them revelation that transforms them, makes them new. And heals their bodies, Lord God, and their family. By their walk, may their family be delivered. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ, we praise you and we thank you in advance for the great things that we will witness, Lord. For you said the plans that you have for us are plans of good and not of evil, to give us a hope in the future, to give us an expected end. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you for that. And we claim and receive that right now in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Got the squad here, y'all. Shalom. All right, let's do it. It says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, right? Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, chain him, hold him down. It says, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him plucked asunder by him right it says and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him it says and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw jesus afar off he ran and worshiped him so this man that was going through all these things and nobody could bind him up, nobody could do anything to him. He saw Jesus and he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud, a loud voice and, and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So he knew who he, he knew who he was, right? For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So now we know what the man was going through. He wasn't, it wasn't power of himself, but, you know, he was, he was, he was possessed with many, many unclean spirits, right? It says, um, verse 10, Mark 5 and 10 says, and, and he besought him much that he would not send him out away out of the country. Now there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding pigs, right? It says, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. I think it's a spiritual uh um note in this Swine is something is something um, unclean is or is an unclean animal, right? But if if you go further into the New Testament, you know, with the dream 
where people use the dream that uh, one of the disciples had. I'm not sure who it was, uh, um, but I think it's Peter. But it was a dream, right? And he and he get it was all men of animals, and he said, "I don't eat uh, things that are unclean and things like that." But I think the unclean thing is is people. So you know, it it was showing the the manner of people it was, right? It says, "And the herd ran violently, um, violently down the steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and they were choked in the sea." Right, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it um what it was that was done, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid, and they were afraid, and they and they um that sat. And they that saw it told them how it befell them to that was possessed with the devil, to him that was possessed with the devil. So he was saying they was they was telling everybody what was going on and what was happening, right? Because everybody seen this guy. Everybody obviously tried to um, um, bind him up, hold him down, you know, um, you know, get him out of that way. And uh, it says. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. They wanted Jesus to leave. They wanted Jesus to leave. One, uh, one of the most things uh, that we see in this is is that people want want to be comfortable in the way that they are, right? If they see mighty power happening, they know that it's gonna be, is it has to be an uproar. Like what's what's going on in the world today, right? You know, um, everybody knows the things that that are happening, but. If God is gonna move, and this is why people didn't want Jesus. There, if, if when God moves, when God moves, a lot of things are gonna be on the surface. A lot of evil, like see how the Legion said their their name, and people, uh, you know, everything in the dark is coming to light. So people didn't want that around them because they knew that some people are gonna get hurt. Things are gonna happen. You know, it's, it's judgment. It's the judgment of the Lord. Right, so they wanted him to leave, even though he performed miracles and healed people. They they said, you know, they said to themselves they didn't want the miracles because what what they came with, you know. If God is gonna change you, he he's gonna change everything about you, you know. All right, so it says um, verse eighteen, Mark five and eighteen, and when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. So under, uh, it says, And he departed and began to publish in the capitalist how great things Jesus had done for him, and all the men did marvel. A lot of people don't see this, but Jesus healed that man. He healed that man even with his words. I have a Bible where Jesus' words is written in red. He said, go home to thy friends and tell them great things the Lord have done for you. But he wanted to be Jesus' disciple. So, no, he did this a lot. So when you see the gospel all throughout the world and you see all, um, all these different divisions of Christianity and things like that, it was a lot of people that Jesus was healing, but he wasn't making them disciples. He only had 12, but he freed and healed, you know, countless people. You know, it says it, it, he it can't even be fit in a book, um, all the books in the world, all the miracles that, that Jesus wrought, right? It says, um, and he departed and began to pl publish it in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogues, um, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray you, come lay hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. So they were they were bumping into him, you know, while, while they were following him, right? And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many 
physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse so she was spending all her money on doctors and stuff like that and it says she suffered many things she'd been through a lot and she spent all her money so look at this it says when she had heard jesus when she had heard of jesus came in a press behind and touched his garment for she said if i may touch but his clothes i shall be whole and that's faith right and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt her um in her body that she was healed of that plague she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague that was because of her faith right so we we should be god seekers every day in that same way and i i, I want y'all to notice something and i say this a lot that miracles start from nothing once we're poured out of what we have god will god will do the miracle in us because usually we depend on the things that we have we depend on the things that we have over god right we look at our stuff our circumstances but we should be looking to god right so a lot of times you know he has to allow us to get to that point where we're like i have nothing left but that's when you have everything because you have god he wants to direct and keep your focus and your attention on him the the one who works the miracles right so um, this is what she experienced. It says, And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Right? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging you. And, and back up, y'all. And, um, and, say, and you saying, Who touched you? That's what they were asking him. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. Right. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. So she was trying to get her healing. And I guess she was trying to she was trying to just walk away like, oh, I was healed. But she believed in God. Um, but God wanted to do something with her, something more. He doesn't just leave you with a miracle, but he, this, watch what he does. He told him all the truth, and he said unto her daughter, Thy faith hath made you whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. So, she got it personally, but he, he drew her into a relationship. So, God doesn't want us to come to him just for, just for the miracles, but he wants us to know him, know his ways, know his heart. He, he said, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue, synagogue house, Certain which said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble us? Why are you troubling the master any further? And, I, and I'm translating. I got a King James, but I'm not going to read it that way. I'm going to translate it. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and um, see if the tumults and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said unto them, why, you, why do you make this ado and weep? Why do you make this scene? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Right. So. I want to I want to say what what it says, but I want to I also want to say what I know. I know that they were keeping her bound by by having a mindset that she was dead already instead of having faith in God, right? So remember when they came to Jesus, when they, when the ruler of the synagogue came to Jesus, when they came to Jesus, he they already they already were saying that she is dead. They already had that in their heart. They didn't have faith that that um that God can that God can do this thing, right? And they laughed him to scorn, the people that was there. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. So he did this for the father and mother, put out all the people who didn't have faith, who didn't believe, who were binding her up and keeping her in that state, right? So many people do that to people, right? It says, and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto you, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, 
for she was of the age of 12 years and they were astonished with the, with a great astonishment and he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat so that word of the lord is blessed and divine that was mark mark chapter 5 jesus performed plenty plenty miracles in that chapter and in a lot of chapters but that one um like uh the the word i got for 2021 is that this is the year of miracles and even though it's miracles just like mark chapter 5 we're going to see a lot of crazy things happening amongst those miracles so even though we'll see a great revival we'll see you know great uproars in the world too and a lot of people won't agree with that and won't want god in their life when they when they see those things happening now i've heard now i don't know for sure but it makes a lot of sense that worship was going on right before you know people uh went into the 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 congress or whatever building that they they went into and stuff like that so i mean and that's evident you know that means god is god is doing something as people imagine how many people um lives were won over you know even that day so behind all the distractions and everything that the enemy is trying to do, God is performing miracles. So pay attention and seek his face and make sure that um, you don't miss your miracle. All right. So any questions, comments, concerns? Thank you for joining with us. Amen. Amen. Short, sweet, and simple. Perfect. Have faith. Keep was, faith. Let's was, trust in God. I was, was going to say that always keep, uh, always um, trust God and don't, and don't think he, he um, can't do anything. Okay. Always trust God and don't think that he, um, anything is impossible for him. Amen. It's perfect. Don't try to be too deep. Daddy, I have a question. I know, I know, Daddy. I know. Yeah, go on. I know, Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> um, what I got from this chapter is that um, um, God always, God wants a relationship with all of us because He's the one that created us, and um, if you praise Him, it's because He will bless you openly. Okay. What'd you do for Him in secret? He'll bless you openly. Okay. How 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 um is it that what you do for him in secret he'll bless you openly? How how did you get that from the scripture? I know that you know that, and I know that you, you know he's calling us into a relationship, but um how do you, how do you see that um in the in the scripture? Well, that's um, in my sense. This is how I like like saw it out of there. Um, she touched um she touched his garment and. It was kind of like blessing it, and then she, and then she tried to walk away, but it was um, called her to bless her open by saying, you are whole. That's powerful. All right, I ain't see that. That's that's what's up. Good. Go for it. Mm -hmm. um, um, God, God, um, he feeds you, you of um, his body, um, God feeds you his body and his blood. What you mean? Like you mean you eat his you eat his skin and 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 his the blood out of his body? That's kind of crazy. I don't, I don't mean. So what you mean? So I I mean eat food. Oh, eat food. Eat food. What kind of food? Is it any kind of food? So cereal you eat in God's body? How though? How? So if I just take a bowl of cereal and I start eating, I'm eating God's body. So how do I how do I make the cereal God's body like? I mean, how do you think that? Um, how do you how do you eat God's body? Um, 
So you wait until everybody has their cereal. So basically what you're saying is like you acknowledge him. You 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 know that he's the one that gave you the food, huh? So so you know, you kinda like bringing him, you're eating with him. Right. Right. I mean I, I know you got some understanding in there, it's just you communicating that and being able to say that, but that's good, man. That's awesome. I'm glad you know that it's not his real body. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Yeah, it is. Go for it, man. Um, uh, do you want me to take over? Uh, I was gonna say, just have. Oh, I can see this. I said this a million times. There was much of a mess of him. He even had little faith. He would bring it out to see if. Oh, um, you have a little bit. He will. He will give you more. Okay, if you have a little bit of faith, he'll give you more. How do you How did you see that in the scripture? If you have a little faith, he'll give you more. <laughs> but you believe that if you have little faith, he'll give you more. Not, not how did that happen in your life? Because if you believe it, that it had to happen in your life, right? No, no, no. no. Just, I, I don't have, I don't have a little faith just to get the most. So help me, help me understand what you mean by if you have little faith, he'll give you more. Or you can change what you're saying into what you really want to say, no matter if somebody said it or not, because God will speak through you by you being you, not worrying about somebody else. Because when you first got up here, you said Trinity took everything. There's no way in the world that anybody can take everything. God is inexhaustible. He will always give you a word. So give him your little. That's what he's saying to you. If little is much in the master's hand. So you give him just that little bit that you know, and he'll give you much with that. So that's what God is speaking to you right now. All right? Know that you're awesome. You're great. God will speak through you. He said, if you open up your mouth, I'll fill it with words. But don't try to chase after somebody else or be like somebody else. Or don't worry if somebody takes something from you because God will give you more. God will give you more. He said, give that to them. God will give you more. All right? He always, he'll always tell you what's for you and what you can deliver to people. All right? I hope that I blessed somebody. Thanks, Messiah. You are awesome. Um, thanks, everybody, who um, answered the question. You had something? Okay. You was... You was uh, all right, guys, that was Mark chapter 5, which I don't know. I don't know why I'm going to let you on here. I know you've been getting good. Let me, let me see. Let me see what you got. Let me see what you got. Um, God, okay. And God missed it? How he missed it? So a guy was so God was trying to bless a guy and the guy tried to bless God, but God missed it. No, he said uh, tried to We don't need you to be the translator. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Okay, let's see let's see what we can get out of that. Um so I have a question. God bless a guy. I have a right? And he I blessed have... him, he was blessed. You know, we talk about the healing, the man, the ruler of the synagogue, God blessed him. And that man tried to bless God, but he missed, he missed them because he didn't know. He didn't know how, how to truly bless him. He didn't know how to truly bless God. That's right. That's right, Roy. So, so we have to learn of God. And when we learn of God, we increase our faith. And it would truly know how to bless God with our hearts. Amen. Amen. And ain't that your favorite word? All right. God, God is in our hearts, right? God made our hearts. That's yours. I have a question. Go for it. You don't have on a shirt, though. Um, something. Um, God makes our hearts. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
So, this is my life. Thank you for rocking with me. I love you guys with the love of God, and we're praying for you guys. Um, this is an awesome service, Mark, Bye -bye. Mark chapter 5. Uh, may the Lord continue to bless, keep, and strengthen you guys in Yeshua's name. Don't say anything about yourself that God didn't say about you. We love you with the love of God. Shabbat shalom. Enjoy your rest. If you're resting today, if you're uh, celebrating Shabbat today, but whatever day, um, remember to take your rest at some time. Blessings, y'all. Share if you care. Okay.